needs to build on, but I, I don't think he's going to shy away from it. And he definitely has big plans. Even Dave Shondell said, I'm surprised that they didn't take a second set from Minnesota. They lost in four to the number seven Gophers. And he said they were able to take one. And then the third set was just a two point victory. Tight games, and, and that's why the effort, he wants to be able to reward the team with all that hard effort by getting a W. So who knows, Sloan, tonight might be the night. It is always possible. We should point out that Iowa has never beaten a top 10 team on the road in program history. But considering that that happened just last week when Northwestern beat Minnesota at the PAV, you truly do never know. Well, you and I were on that call, so we'll see. Irk Hart on the attempt right down the middle. It is Clayton who is denied. Irk Hart one more time, and the second contact not going to be there. Yeah, Irk Hart is gets the most attempts on this team, way above the second most uh, kill leader for Iowa, and she's got all the shots to prove it. Nice transfer too. We'll, we'll talk about that whole transfer situation uh, coming up. Iowa strikes first. An overpass, or almost an overpass, but goes into the net. Yeah, great serve, too. And this is how they got him in the first place. But it was such a strong match because Iowa had a great serving match against Purdue. A lot of strategy. Mari Hinkle here on the end line. Hinkle at the service line. Here's an attempt by Hudson, and that is sent back. What a block there by the Hawkeyes. Great block, and this is why they hit Tessier up there. You've got a strong block. Oh, wait, excuse me. <laughs> we got her up there in the middle. She's making a headway. Toyosi on the right side for that strong block. On a banjo, one on one, two, as that goes long. And give another point to Iowa, up 4 nothing, hitting the ground running here. Yeah, taking advantage of some pure errors by Purdue. Get a look at the block part of the sold out student section in West Lafayette. Another setup for Hudson, and that is going to be Purdue's first point. Yeah, and we'll be talking about Eva Hudson uh, all night. In fact, everyone's talking about Eva Hudson, but I'm sure she wanted to put a stop to that uh, rotation there and get out of it somehow. And that's who their go to is it's Eva Hudson. Purdue serving again. Tessier goes behind. Here's Hudson, block touch by the Hawkeyes. Toyosi on a banjo, goes for it, and she hammers that through. Right, and she's not even taking a full approach. The nice thing about her is she has so much power. She really drives and gives her body up. A two-step spike approach, and she puts that ball down. Look at how Eva Hudson is performing this season. Her ranks amongst freshmen in the nation first. In multiple categories, she's first in the Big Ten in kills per set as well as Madeline Cook will pick up the point. Yeah, somebody we want to talk about more is Madeline Cook. And she had, out of those three pin hitters we were talking about earlier, she's got the most opportunity because she plays that opposite position. She's going to get that ball nice and flat all the way out to the pin. So she, hopefully she's going to have more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Eva Hudson at the service line for the Boilermakers, trailing 5-2. to two. They found themselves in nearly 4 nothing hole in front of their home crowd, as you mentioned, celebrating 20 years of their three-team coaching staff as that hits the tape and drops down. Right, Emily Brown, transfer from Missouri. That's a crafty serve right there. And I always say, you know, unfortunately, the setters have to be ready for that ball. That setter was pretty far away from it. You just got to get a heads up and be ready to go for any time that serve drops over. Ortega looking for Jones. That is Doug in the back court. Utz Hudson tries to go to the back row as well. And Colvin makes that difficult right at the net. Yeah. Great defensive effort. Right now, you got Amaya Jones getting that big swing. Very disciplined down the line for Skimmer Horn just to take that ball nice and high. Brown back to serve again. Looking on the opposite side, it's Audrey Black. She tries once more. Ortega right down the middle. That is 
what Iowa wants. That time, Amaya Jones doing what she's been doing this season. That's right. She can go straight away or she can go cross body. And she transitions hard. She's up, she's fast. Ortega finds her friend, and she puts that ball down. Amaya Jones coming into this season said, watch me have the best year of my career under Jim Barnes and this middle running offense. And she is averaging career highs and kills, blocks, and points, too, having a great senior season as Hudson hammers that in. Yeah, and Hudson gets that ball, but it really starts with the pass. Even though it was out of system, Horning does a nice job of kind of playing a lot of different roles. And we'll see her in this DS role tonight. She was a libero for the last couple matches. Switch back over to the DS. Hudson gets that off the take. Can Iowa keep it alive? No. And people did a nice job flying from the backcourt. Another transfer from UCLA, from Iowa. Just doing a nice job for this program. We've got Hudson got the tough serve. Great pickup. Just can't capitalize on the third contact. Tega looking for Vanderweide and rejected, and Purdue has taken its first lead. Yeah, Vanderweide is that player that is six rotations. She's going to get kind of those balls that are all over the place right now. That set was a little inside. The blockers did not have to move at all. And you got a strong block up there by Purdue. Raven Coleman may be undersized, but she's got great hops and a great presence at the net, too. Well, and how about Iowa, too? I mean, just the fact that they were able to give a nice swing. No blockers up there to Audrey Black, somebody that's new into this lineup. She's played a few times, but she's in this role tonight in a big-time role, that is. Dumped in a, a fantastic job by Megan Redder, part of that two-setter combination they have. Right, and she's going to play along the front row because she's a tall setter. So they're going to use her in not only offense, what we just saw, but also in the blocking scheme. When she comes around to the backcourt, Balancey is going to come in, the transfer from Northern Illinois, and set from the backcourt. And Vander White is going to get that to drop. And it's nice to see because she's getting an error on the on the first kill or first opportunity she had. She turns around and does something with the second ball that she gets. I like the space. If the setter can give her the space to swing with, she's going to find those kills. And Tessier back to serve for the Hawkeyes. She took a set against Purdue about 10 days ago when they met Emma Ellis showing off her big arm, but far too long. Right, kind of out of system play. Great serving by Iowa. Emily Brown got the ball up, but it wasn't a perfect pass, so the blockers are camped on Emma Ellis. Emma Ellis did not play their most recent match against Rutgers. Wanted to get some younger players more experience as Iowa sending this game back and forth. They take a two-point lead. They're doing a really nice job of just being aggressive from that serving line. You have to go out of the gate fast against a team like Purdue, especially on their home court. Two service aces apiece for both of these teams. And of course, the rule is, as soon as you say that, That's there will right. be an air. We jinx them. I like to see that aggressive serve just missing wide instead of at the bottom of the tape. Narrow one-point lead for Iowa coming on strong, looking for their first win in a Big Ten play as setter Grace Balancefer is at the service line. An overpass, and Emma Ellis says, I'll take that. That's right, she'll take that with a smile, of course, because we love watching her play, a lot of enthusiasm. But give this point to the server. Grace Balancefer, Emma Ellis, nice heads-up play, fast point opportunity. Tied at 10 in the first set, an overpass. Vanderwine, that's going to hit the top of the net, but go to the Hawkeyes. It will, and, and hitting the antenna is not what you want to do off the block. It's a good tool opportunity by Eddie Vanderwine. Getting a lot of playing time in last year under different leadership. This year was able to carry it over and play those six rotations. Barnes says a hard worker is what he would use to describe her, as you mentioned, those six rotations. That is too long on the attempt by Madeline Cook. Well, she got that touch, which is nice, which is, you know, at the last second, you've got to really look for that, too. they hitting so high and at a fast clip. That's what you want to do. And, and good hitters will really go for those high hands. at the service line on a banjo is stopped. On the other side to Earthheart. Balancey for looking for Hudson.
kicks in and she just powers it through multiple arms at such a successful rate. That's exactly what I would say too. Where is Eva Hudson? Well, you got Skimmer Horn giving a nice play up all the way across as Grace Balancefer and Eva Hudson finds that hole, finds that seam. Picked up by Anna Banjo and then into the net is going to give the point to the Boilermakers. Well, Delaney McSweeney likes that gap play. It's a set away from the setter. So she's going in, but she's not going as hard and high as she normally did on that one. The set was a little bit low and maybe the tempo wasn't quite there. Bornung again, just over the tape as McSweeney goes out of bounds. Well, I like how they go back to her too, because that's, that's how they're gonna beat at Purdue. They need to get those middles involved. And Purdue has got to respect them. Four nothing run for the Boilermakers. They trailed very early in this set, four nothing. Go back to Anna Banjo again. Urquhart gets it over. Balance for back set. Going off speed to perfection is Cook. Yeah, Cook is doing a nice job. She's getting some attempts in there. She's got four kills, or I'm sorry, excuse me, three kills, I believe, with four attempts. Well, Purdue on a 5 nothing scoring run, looking cohesive in plays like this on offense. Volleyball on the Big Ten Network is presented by Unleaded 88, Engine Smart, Earth Kind. And before this match, the coaching staff of the Boilermakers, Dave Shondell, his brother John Shondell, and also Kathy Jewell, honored for their 20 years together on this coaching staff. The longevity is unmatched in Power Five. You can see how that kind of stability can lead to a program with this kind of success as Iowa will get that to fall. Yeah, and nice thing about Iowa, too, if it's not a three-point pass, they're still going to force the middle. And out of that timeout, it was nice for them to go back to Delaney McSweeney for that kill. Lori Hinkle gets that over from the service line. Quick hitter, successful for Hannah Clayton, who drills that down. Right, if you can do it, I could do it, too, right? So Hannah Clayton... Former Hawkeye, nice skimmer horn pass there, but really no block. Not respecting her at all. I'm sure Amaya Jones won't make that mistake again. She's seventh in the Big Ten, hitting 348 this season, so perhaps they should. On a banjo, tries to drop that in off speed. Here is Hudson unloading. Kinkle setting up on a banjo. Balance Seifert to Hudson again. Great dig by Hinkle. And fast, too powerful, dynamic. Colvin's up no matter what. You have to work really hard as a middle attacker. That's kind of in the gap, and she's got a one on one opportunity, but she is just skying over Amaya Jones with that, what is it, 10 7 jump of Raven Colvin. Amaya Jones hits the outside corner, placed it perfectly. She did, and that's a great shot, too. A lot of times people pay attention to the ball that's straight down Sloan. But where it's at is along the end lines, along the sidelines. That's where you're going to find that open court. The vision in a split second moment in the air with that's the right. power. That's what's amazing about this sport. Balance Seifer. Back sets. And a point off of Cook. Yeah, and Cook's getting the attempts, and she's proven that she belongs out there as the opposite. Setter's doing a nice job finding, going against the grain. Blacker holds a little bit with Coleman. Nice opportunity for Cook. Could there be other opportunities when you have someone like Eva Hudson who demands so much attention? Right, and, and then the Blackers are definitely focused on her. They're trying to stop her. But in reality, she's gonna get her kills. You kind of have to say, okay, she's gonna get those kills. What can we do to stop other players on this team? Cross court set, sent right back. Ortega tries it again. Point will go to the Hawkeyes. Yeah, it was a net call. So it was good for Iowa to just kind of hold their ground, even though it's sloppy sometimes. Uh, you want to be able to hang out and wait to, to see if the other team makes an error, and that's what Iowa did. Urquhart back to serve for the Hawkeyes. Player who followed over 
Jim Barnes from Tulane. She's a native of Virginia Beach. Is that's a great block by Amaya Jones, who got up for that one. She did. She had all eyes on Renner there. Uh, you know, that's what you need to do as a middle. You know, Renner's up there for a reason to try to be offensive. Amaya Jones is right there saying, no, 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 that ball is not going down. It's something you know, too, knowing the size of the setter in front of you. That might be what she's looking to do. Vanderwine, it's that over. Cross court set for Hudson, who unloads with that big one. <laughs> she did, and that's fine. And she gets her team fired up saying, let's go. And it's a nice tempo ball all the way out there. But she gets on top of that, passes up the block, and puts that ball down. Look at that arm swing all the way through before she lands on the ground. Four kills, one ace so far for the freshman. One of the best players in the Big Ten already. And so Maya Jones sends that right back for a point. She did, and, and this nice physical job by Maya Jones. And this is where her leadership, her veteran experience pays off. She stays up at the net, she anticipates what's going to happen, and she puts the ball away with power. Purdue going to have to get a free ball over to the Hawkeyes, and too long on the attempt by Black. Or they're going to say it was touched. They are going to say they, they were really fighting for that one, noticing the line judge on the corner called a touch. They got that one. Nice job by Iowa. Audrey Black doing a nice job. Couple kills for her so far. Standing in for Adina Schmidt, who is not playing today. It's not injury related, so she's picking up a big role. And one of the best servers in the Big Ten, Amaya Jones, keeping it going. We will step aside for a moment. Just a one point contest in set number one. Amaya Jones goes back to work. Six in the Big Ten in aces and picks up another one. That time I did not jinx her. Exactly. She's had 20 aces so far. Add that 22 aces right now. That's a lot for a middle attacker to go back there on the service line. Lots of confidence. She has two of Iowa's four in this first set. Renner looking for Ellis, and she is going to power that in. Right. Her only two hitters up there, Purdue needed to find a way to side out. They had their number one star in the backcourt. If they weren't going to set her a back row attack, they really had to rely on somebody like Emma Ellis if they're not passing so well. Off the tape by Colvin and a fantastic serve, Purdue leading by two. It was really placed well, and it wasn't even that hard of a serve. Colvin knows exactly where she's putting that ball, aiming towards McSweeney to, for her to make a decision. Am I going to pass this, or am I going to get out of the way? That time she goes into the net. Colvin will rotate out player with the most returning experience on this Purdue team, but still just a sophomore. Kelly Tessier at the service line for the Hawkeyes. Renner looking for Ellis and denied by the Hawkeyes. Yeah, Ellis just needs a little bit more space to work with mm -hmm. up there. You have Toyosi on a banjo. Big block, she's striking at the antenna. She's trying to hit that ball line, just not enough space to work with. Purdue leads by two. After that, touch the antenna. To the chagrin of Jim Barnes and the Hawkeye bench. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he, oh, I guess he's not pulling a challenge on this one. Balancey Furries back to serve. And the quick hitter, McSweeney, sends that in. Yeah, one thing that Shondell did tell us is that he was hoping that his medals would respect, have a little bit more confidence, better uh, visual with somebody like McSweeney. She's really skying over Clayton on the side of Clayton, and you can see Cook is trying to step in, but just not fast enough. 
McSweeney last time against Purdue had six kills, just one air, hit 615, picking up where she left off. Balan Seifer goes behind her to Ellis, who picks up the point. Yeah, nice interchangeable parts, right, with those pin hitters. We saw Cook really capitalizing on the right side. And now you've got Ellis going on the right side. So I think it's up to Purdue. They've got to get that right side attack going. That's where they're finding the success. Ellis just has a powerful arm. She had nine kills last time out against Purdue as she will sub out Hornung at the service line. And responding right back is on a banjo of the Hawkeyes. Right, and, and if Purdue can do it on the right side, Iowa can do it too. Doing a nice job of going against the grain. The set goes all the way back to the pin. Toyos, he has to be patient and making sure that ball is crossing over to her right arm so she can get a good swing. Two kills on six attempts. Barnes says if she's playing well, so are we. Hudson will lob that over. Tessier setting up Urquhart to perfection as she gets that through. And she got up there too. I'm watching the setter. Tessier get her feet up there. A lot of times setters struggle because they think they have to play some defense first before they get up to the net. Urquhart does a nice job on that tempo ball. Tied at 23 going down to the wire in set number three. And a tough one for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, just lets them off the hook, right? You want to keep that serving pressure on, and that's a hard, that's a hard thing. You've got to be back there. You've got to, you got to really tell yourself, have a lot of confidence, and still take them out of system. Set point for Purdue, and then they pick it up. Big in the middle gives this to Purdue. 25-23. Yeah, four hands, right? Four hands on Amaya Jones, and if they couldn't do it all set, why not do it on the last point? Players. And then you have somebody like Amaya Jones coming into uh, Holloway and making some noise. And Amaya Jones just had it all together. Very physical presence at the net. Senior leadership did a nice job of getting Iowa kind of back on track on the serving line and then did everything that she needed to do to, to get to 23 points. So let's see if Iowa can keep this going and kind of, you know, keep that momentum up where at the same time Purdue, I'm sure, would like to clean up uh, their serve and pass game. Is there a way that per, uh, Purdue can try and disrupt Iowa too with that passing and serving? Absolutely. Ellen Seifer goes cross court to Hudson and she is rejected. Yes, I'm sure that feels good, right? Somebody like Hudson, that, you know, what, 19 kills last time they played, hitting way above a normal outside hitting hitting percentage. Um, pretty outstanding to get that stuff block right up the gate. Going off speed. So does Urquhart, but that is going to drift out of bounds. Yeah, and that's okay. Urquhart is, you know, trying to find her way. Sometimes you're not going to get those big swings. She's trying to put the ball in the court, force that defense kind of out of system. She's testing the defense back there. Skimmerhorn back at the service line. Tessier back sets it to Anna Banjo. Kept alive. And the rally continues off the great effort by the Boilermakers. Anna Banjo once more out of bounds, though, on the big swing. Yeah, definitely great defensive moves by Purdue, and this is why they're ranked so high in the nation. Just that move by Skimmer Horn, and the, hold on, she's been out three matches, and she's still able to get that stab up for her team. Tessie looking to Anna Banjo, it takes some heat off, and Purdue still able to keep the play alive. Right down the middle, McSweeney did not. is Cook. Just go the distance, right? Just keep the ball off the ground, and that's the name of the game in volleyball. If you can play some good defense, throw your body around, just do whatever it takes and trust your teammates, you're going to earn that point. Cook five kills today. We talked about it in the open. Dave Shondell looking for more consistency from his outsides. Being inconsistent, though, on a banjo in this match. Yeah, and they were they keep feeding her on that right side pin. I'm sure that's something they talked about. They had some nice offensive production towards the end of that last set. 
They like that right side pin, and they're going to keep going to her. Coming off a 10 kill performance against number seven, Minnesota. That point's going to go to the Boilermakers off the surface there. Emily Brown back to serve for Purdue. After taking set one, Tessier skying is Urquhart a fantastic kill. Yeah, watching Amaya Jones throw her arms right up to the sky saying, okay, I think I helped with that. And she did. She got Colvin to stay with her. And then look, even Renner jumped with the middle. So no block up there. Kudos to Urquhart and the setter. Hudson has that sent back for the second time. What a stop by the Hawkeyes. Nice stop. Not a lot of places that Eva Hudson can go. And even though Shondell did tell us that Hudson has a lot in her toolbox, she can do tools, she can hit over the block, she can hit cross court and swing line. That time, Iowa had her number. It's Jones and Tessier on that stop. A little bit of chaos as that's just sent over by Skimmerhorn. Urquhart hammers that into the opposite side. Picking up speed, right? She really picked up speed. And for all those outside hitters out there, watch Urquhart. I love how she's explosive. You're not supposed to just kind of dance into the net and take your time. You're supposed to just take off. And she sure did that. She's just been unleashing with her big arm today as Jones can't get that to fall right up the front. And going off speed is Urquhart putting on a one-woman show here in the second she set for the a couple quick kills right away. That's her fifth kill on nine attempts. And just nice, nice court awareness, too. Finding a groove, hitting 444 in this match so far. Renner, a quick hitter to Colvin, who blasts it. Yeah, great pass to Colvin, gave herself enough space between herself, the setter, and the net. And look at that pass, right outside her body line, perfect. And there's so many great arms in the Big Ten, but just really feeling like I did not want to be on the receiving end of that one. <laughs> That's right. Six to five is the Iowa advantage after a very close set one. Just two points here in West Lafayette as Urquhart continues to go to work. Yeah, and in that rotation too, Urquhart, we saw her over in the left side pin for a couple rotations. And that when they're in passing, she's just gonna go straight up. And you'll see her here on the right side. Ortega does a nice job getting her one on one. And she just has her way. Urquhart back at the service line, four kill, excuse me, six kills, four digs as Renner looks to Ellison, kept alive off the dip. Vander Wine tries to go off speed. Colvin once more, and she gets the ball. Yeah, Colvin's like, give me the ball. Give me the ball. She knows how to score, and she's going to score from the serving line as well. Great move by Alice, just getting up nice and high, and she's up. She's ready to go, Colvin is, for that back set. Back set looking for Black. Ellis. Ortega to the other side now, Vanderwaal. The quick flip goes out of bounds and a point to the up. Yeah, and I appreciate Purdue trying to pump their middles, and Hannah Clayton's been quiet. Uh, right now, and she's in a real aggressive middle. She moves really well. She can block. She touches a lot of balls. She gets her team pumped up. So if they can find her in other situations, especially dig transition, they're going to do a nice job. And the service ace, another point to Iowa. They've got a three-point lead. Uh, unusual for Purdue. They kind of pride themselves on their, their passing. They train an awful lot uh, with fundamentals in the passing department. Maya Jones, a great server back at the line and immediately picks up another race. Right, and, and really going into the seams here, Maya Jones, you got to watch out for her. That arm is nice and high, stop point of contact. That ball floats outside of Emily Brown's body line. 
And it looked like Brown was right there. Was there just a lot of English on that? <laughs> That's right. You think it's coming right at you, Sloan, and then all of a sudden it, it, it makes a beeline. Has some good humor as she goes to the bench after that air. Iowa with the 10 to 7 lead. It's Grace Balance gets that over off the tape. Great recovery by Urquhart. Balance Seifer to Ellis takes some heat off, dumping it right in. Ellis, too long. A little too long for Ellis. She's not getting a lot of snap on that ball. And watching Vander White over there as an off blocker defense, too. Doing a nice job for her Hawkeyes in the outside hitting position. Ellis, four kills today, but Iowa extending its lead now to four. It is Tessier at the service line. Balance Seaver up the middle for Ellis, and that is also out of bounds. Iowa keeps rolling up to five as their lead. Yeah, and she had, a, she had the court to swing into. It's almost like she needed that ball a little bit higher. She was off balance. It didn't look like a comfortable set for her. Quick hitter. Not successful there for the Boilermakers, and that was touched. So it's going to be an Iowa point. Yeah, great defense by Urquhart, too. Getting things done in the front row, but in the back court, just holding her ground. She stops her feet, point of contact, so she's able to make a nice dive play with her left hand. I might confuse her for a libero with the way she's <laughs> been right. in the back row. Well, Barnes knew she was something special because he brought her with him. Vander Wine gets it down. Timeout called by Purdue, trailing by seven as Iowa, after dropping set number one, storms back here midway through the second set. Offense, defense, and big blasts like this helping them out. Michelle Urquhart of the Hawkeyes having a tremendous game. Already five kills and six, uh, six digs, only a couple days removed from a near double-double against Minnesota, and she's on pace for that here. Tessier to Abanjo, point to Iowa as she powers it through multiple arms. Yeah, she's saying, let's go. She turns to her teammates and says, this is our set, and here's why. She takes that big two-step and really goes after Cook's left arm. Textbook tool there. Tessier continues the solid serving. It's going to lead to a free ball for the Hawkeyes. Tessier on a banjo, though, has that projected. Yeah, Michelle Urquhart, it, she has. She's made the huge difference. Of course, help from her teammates, but boy, she's got that look of determination on her face in the front row, in the backcourt. As a six rotation player, somebody that's new to Big Ten volleyball, doing a nice job. This is an Iowa team that's shown flashes. Although on a banjo is going to be rejected right there. Iowa still leading 15 to 9, but you're seeing it with plays like Urquhart about how they're really contending despite being 0 4. Well, look at Cook, too. Cook blocks Toyosi on a banjo on the right side, then she switches over to the left side and gives her another block. So she's following her around. I like it by Cook. Getting the side out, Vanderwide. Yeah, gonna get the, the touch. Push. Yeah, she's got that touch. She hits high hands. She hits flat too. Not a lot of tops when she's really hitting hard with a lot of power going after those hands. Those are the kind of risks you have to take. And she's traditionally not a oh one, not a left side one number one player for the team. She's more like an L two for the Iowa. Alan Seifer right off the middle, kept alive and sent over by Anna Banjo. Great work by the Hawkeyes, and they'll keep this one alive, too. Alan Seifer. One more try for Clayton, and she gets it. Right, just stay up there, right? Nice presence at the net. Good defense, great setting. You got Hinkle back there controlling the court, but hands up for Iowa and didn't happen. Hannah Clayton's on the board. Spent four years 
for the Hawkeyes and comes in to really replace Taylor Trammell as Purdue trying to get a run going. They trail by five. Yeah, making their way, right? So Hannah Clayton put in her time at Iowa, did a nice job. Very consistent player. Brings a lot of leadership to this Purdue, Purdue team. Works extremely hard. Great role model. Dave Shondell says her energy, her passion makes her a leader. That's the kind of grad transfer you want to bring in as Hudson gets that over. Or comes. for setting up Colvin and Iowa feeling good this set with another rejection. Yeah, not a lot of places to go. You got somebody like McSweeney, that big block right in front, bound Seifer's kind of trapping her. Right here, Colvin can't do the wrist away. Not a lot of options. She's telling her setter, give me up a little bit higher. Especially when you're six foot one going against six foot seven as Hudson gets it over. Point for Purdue. It's a five point lead for Iowa, but you feel like the Boilermakers feeling yeah. their way back. They're making their way back right now for, you know, Hudson. We even called her name. Only six kills. She has three errors. Unusual hitting below 200. So she's probably going to climb her way back into those high hitting numbers that she's so used to. And a tough air to take for the Boilermakers. Right, as soon as you feel like your team's starting to go, you get back to that serving line and you've got to keep the pressure on. There's a delicate balance there. You want to serve tough, but you can't make those pure airs or else it's hard to dig yourself out of this, this rut of six points. On a banjo. Going off speed is Colvin. And that point will go to Purdue. Yeah, take advantage. They were in the block. I was in the block. So Purdue's going to take advantage of that easy point. Iowa maintaining this cushion. 18 to 13 after dropping set number one by just two points. Dave Shondell trying to get his squad back into this second set. Eva Hudson. Go to Purdue, a little out of sorts, the Hawkeyes. Yeah, there. pretty risky, I think, for Ortega to, to kind of, she's kind of going back on her hind uh, feet and kind of shooting this ball out to the gap to Amaya Jones, who's trying to make something happen in the middle. Uh, she has opportunity, though. She's got a nice lead. And Eva Hudson gets that into the net, back to a five-point lead, and it was the second set that was Iowa's, the first time these two teams met about 10 days ago. Here's how it's looked like uh, for Iowa against number 11 Purdue, number seven Minnesota, able to get these sets late, but have not come out on the winning end just yet. Black gets that over for the Hawkeyes, tipped over the other way. Vander Wide places the off speed shot perfectly. Yeah, and really, there's no other place for Vander Wide to go. She knows she doesn't like that tight set, so she's gonna, she's gonna tip. Right over the block, it's a low ball. She can't swing, she'll swing right into the block and opportunity. Purdue's defense just back, ready for that deep hit. That's a tough ball to get defensively right over the block. Urquhart with the service air, and that's tough. She was one of the best servers in the AAC when she was competing with Tulane last year. Five service airs for Purdue, or for Iowa, excuse me, compared to Purdue's three. Colvin back at the line. Ortega, Vanderwein, still alive. Up the middle, some miscommunication for the Hawkeyes. Right, you would think one time they'd fix it the second time. I think that's why uh, I'm just calling a timeout right here. He's got to fix it. Iowa leading by four on the road in West Lafayette, trying to get set number two. Big Ten, Wisconsin three and one this season. Yeah, it's gonna be a good match. You know, every every night is, right? It's a Big Ten. That's, that's right. Where, that's where you're here, Wednesday night. Back to back. All those volleyball fans out there. Best volleyball conference in the nation. Iowa leading by four, clinging to a lead in this set, but both teams with some sloppy play. See if Iowa can try to put this away as Black does just that. Yeah, she did. She comes up big when they need it. And that was a nice clean hit. 
us a look at the RPI, of course, well represented in the top 35 Northwestern, greatly aided by that win over Minnesota, but Iowa, Iowa, Ohio State in the lead at number three overall. Well, it helps to play really hard competition. Uh, if you got that strength of schedule, your RPI is going to be up there. Black again, usually a supporting role thrust into a more prominent one today against the number five team in the country, back-to-back -back kills. Well, here it is. It's a right side pin. So Purdue's not known for having a strong block on the left side, so take advantage. Go, go, go. Set that right side. And Alice gets it over. She gets it over, and Urquhart maybe with the head bump there. Alice needs something. She needs a little love. She needs some, some kills in this set to get her Purdue team back. That fortuitous for Ellis and the Boilermakers seeming like we're out of system. Let's just keep this rally going and instead leads to a point. Ortega. Is it to Vanderwein? Ellis on the other side. Vanderwein, they'll try once more. And Vanderwey will just flip it over. Up the middle, Clayton. Vanderwey, another try. And up the middle, it is Hudson with the back row blast, but out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds. They're trying something. They're trying to find her back there to, to do something. She's not having a great night as far as finding the court. And you can tell from her facial expression right here. Not the Eva Hudson that we're used to seeing. Uh, and that's okay. She's got a long career ahead of her. But right now, tonight, hitting those low numbers. For the season 339, that puts her top 10 in the Big Ten. And the players that she's surrounded by are all middles. So for her to be in that kind of conversation, it was interesting hearing, even from Dave Shondell himself, no one could have seen her having this big of an impact this early in this conference. A look at what she's done here, her freshman season, the three-time Big Ten Player of the Week. There's only been six. Taken five of six Big Ten Freshmen of the Week. And then also leading the Big Ten in kills and points per set. It has been remarkable. It has been. And to think of somebody that committed early on to Notre Dame, there's a coaching change that happened. She contacts Purdue and says before NLI, hey, I need to I need to make a change here. And uh, luckily, you know, Purdue had a spot for her. So good for Purdue. That's certainly helpful for them. And you know who she reminds me of is Caitlin Clark, another all-star dynamic freshman in the Big Ten, of course, for the Hawkeye women's basketball team. You look at the comparison between the Big Ten Freshman of the Week awards, the kind of offensive numbers they put up, and their national prominence when you look statistically at what they've done on the court. Oh, it was a lot of fun to follow Caitlin Clark, for sure. She was all over social media. And even if it, you don't follow women's basketball, you knew who Caitlin Clark was. By the way, today, picked as the preseason Big Ten Player of the Year, maybe... I'm, out, I'm actually going to say certainly not surprising. <laughs> so we are very close to basketball season starting, but you see the parallels between having that national spotlight in their respective sports. Balance Seifer goes up with one arm. That's going to give the point to Iowa and setting them up for set point. A set point right here for Iowa. This is a big, big set for Iowa. Taking some of the momentum from the first set into this was big. Tessier on set point, and just that quickly, Iowa has tied it up in West Lafayette. 25-17 goes their way for set number two on the road against the number five team in the country. It is Tessier who is able to put it away. Well, just amazing serving performance by Iowa so far, even in two sets. So great job. Right now we got a tie match, folks. The news and highlights from around the conference on the big show tonight at 10.30 Eastern on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Of course, we've got a double header of volleyball that you can 
check out anything that you missed later on tonight. But we are split after two sets, and here's how things look. You see those seven service aces by the Hawkeyes. Yeah, they're taking advantage. Very aggressive serving, really going after some of the key players of Purdue, like Eva Hudson, um, exposing maybe some things that Purdue hasn't been exposed to in a while. So typically, Purdue's really strong back there in the passing department, especially at home. But right now, Iowa's just, why not, right? They've got this attitude, like, we're going for our W, and we're going to go for it. On the line today, Purdue not only has a seven-match win streak, but they are 7-0 and at home this season, one of two undefeated Big Ten teams at their respective arenas. And by the way, Purdue, as we talk about how Iowa has been disruptive taking that second set, Purdue hit 0 62 in set number two. Yeah, and it wasn't a clean set at all. I think for both sides, I think that the key was is that Iowa was able to gain a, a nice edge uh, with the helps of a couple of hitters. Amaya Jones, Urquhart, Vanderweide really did a nice job, and they're going after the right side pin. Uh, they're scoring that way. Urquhart came alive, and they were able to create those mini runs. Uh, which got him ahead. Purdue started to make some headway, um, and then they would just have a, a pure air that kind of slowed him down. I, I'm really curious to see if Purdue makes some changes here, um, some of those slight adjustments. We'll see, it's a good one here. Third set taken by the Hawkeyes against some great opponents. Purdue, when they were ranked number 11, they're number five now, and then against Minnesota too. You see those flashes of this program as Hudson <laughs> unloads and dug by Hinkle. Kept alive by McSweeney on a banjo. Powers that through, and you see the fire for the Hawkeyes to start set three. Yeah, the happiness too. McSweeney's giving that ball <laughs> over to the side. Oh, you've got Tyosi. Yeah, she's saying to hit her head. I got this. <laughs> Great. Great camera work. Love that. And they pick up another point to start out two nothing. Purdue looked done ready. Well, you gotta wonder too. You got Eva Hudson, who they're going after. They're picking on her. Okay, she's in the front row. They're gonna try to make her pass as many balls possible before she takes that swing. And then you got Skimmerhorn, who's just back from being three matches out. Eva Hudson, though, quiet the Hawkeye bench. That yeah, out of system play. It's great, you know, she's got a ball that's nice high off the net by Balance Seifer. She's able to see the whole court, and that's one thing that Shondell liked about her. She's got great vision. Advanced well beyond her experience as Iowa just has to get that over. Up the middle, Colvin is stopped. Balance Seifer tries Hudson once more. Another try for Hudson and dug beautifully by Hinkle. Urquhart had a great second set as Hudson goes off speed that time, but reading it perfectly is Urquhart. Alan Seifer back set, and it is Cook putting it away. Yeah, just kind of buying her time over there on the right side pin with Cook. I'm, I'm really curious why on a lot of these out of system sets, Purdue is not going to Cook. They keep going to Eva Hudson on these out-of-system plays where I really think that Cook could shine on an out-of-system play on the right side. Skimmer Horn at the service line. It is Urquhart who is denied. And Purdue takes a 3-2 to two lead. Oh, yes. We've got the, the elbow going down on Hornug. Hopefully she's okay. That's a tough one when you celebrate. Especially if uh, you vertically challenge in a slight way to your right side attacker. As a person who is tall and a long wingspan, you always feel bad when that happens as Colvin sends that right down. Yeah, our teammates are sending her too, saying, let's go. Colvin, we need you. We need the action out of the middle. Urquhart gets stopped, and her teammates really celebrate for Purdue. Urquhart picks it up, and she'll send it over. Hudson ready and fights. Tessier up the middle to Jones, and that's what we saw work so well in 
set number right, one. Right, that dig transition play. You've got Hiko back there. She's experienced. She she doesn't have to move a lot. She knows exactly what's going on the court. Great libero to watch if you're young out there. Watch Hinkle. She does a nice job of getting the ball right to her setter, and her setter pumps the middle no matter where she is on the court. By the way, number one in digs per set in the Big Ten, beautifully blocked by Jones and Tessia. Yeah, those two together put up a big block. Of course, out of system, they know they're going to Hudson. Hudson, Hudson tries to do a wrist away, turns around, tries to fake it. I was not buying it. So she's going deep into the repertoire here <laughs> to try and get things going for her. That's right. Alan Seifert on fire was that shot from Cook. That's a good response by Cook. I'm liking her tonight. She's getting those good opportunities on the right side. I like to see her getting fed a little bit more. 11 attempts, seven kills, one air right now for Cook. It's a great game. It is. Purdue with the one point lead. It has been a back and forth affair as we are in set number three. That is into the net by Ava Torrance, the defensive specialist. Yeah, she's getting some opportunities to play, especially when Skimmerhorn was out. She was doing a nice job, and, and that's the nice thing about Purdue. They have a bench full of DSs that can come in and contribute. Burkhart, solid server herself. Renner looks to the middle for Hudson, and she finishes it. Yeah, there was like a two ball, so it was kind of delayed. Hudson went up there a little early, but boy, look at her hang time. Just waiting to swing right in that seam. She saw it, and she went for it. And the thing is, she's not hitting low Sloan. She's still hitting high into the seam, and that's how she gets that kill. Maya Jones that just drifts out of bounds, so Purdue will take a two-point lead. And this is what Purdue needs to capitalize on right here. So they have this two-point swing. How do we keep this going with Eva Hudson back on the serving line? Hudson lost that over. Vanderwine has that set right back, but she is able to cut the point. Yeah, she's crafty. Vanderwine's in there for that reason alone. She doesn't make a lot of errors. She's consistent. She sees that. Hands are right up in front of her and takes advantage of it. Read that block perfectly, and another point for the Hawkeyes. We'll tie this up off the serve. That part of this game has been so successful for them today, especially with this player, Amaya Jones, back behind the line. And she makes it difficult once more. Another ace, Amaya Jones, is on fire from the service line today. She's doing a nice job serving the seams, and it's not just you know, getting that quick ace, which she does all the time. She's forcing Skimmerhorn to go to her right side. Seven service aces she has today. Just a remarkable game as Ellis has that rejected. The blocking for Iowa looking really solid today. Solo block by Audrey Black. McSweeney did a full jump with Renner. Ellis had a one-on-one, -on -one and Audrey Black took that shot away from her. What a big play one-on-one -on -one with Emma Ellis to get the stop. Shermerhorn is Colvin up the middle. Vanderwein goes long, but it was tipped, so a point to Iowa. Three-point lead for yeah, the Yeah, they got a nice run right now by Vanderwein and just staying in the game. Some big transition plays, really big, not making errors, especially in those long rallies. Maya Jones that time is long. All good runs come to an end, and she's in good spirits still. Yes, I think we're going to see her in good spirits all the time. There's something to be said about a fifth-year senior, I think, Sloan. You just have a different attitude. Especially, it feels like the rebirth of her playing as well. Uh, Jim Barnes said he felt like she was completely underutilized with her skill set. Until the season of Coach Ellis hammers that hard and too long, and she's been a little off target today, but she, she was has. hit. Yeah, she has, and I think the set, setting tempo has been different every time for Emma Ellis. You can see the frustration on her face, uh, but this is what Purdue does. They always have somebody on the bench ready to come in. See the five kills, six airs today as Iowa leads 11 to eight in set number three. Tessier. Six foot three setter back to serve for the Hawkeyes. And that's 
Singles won. Yeah, well, some would say that would be a uh, good sub. <laughs> For sure. Got Maddie Chin in there right now. 6'3", outside hitter, another senior out of that trio. In Oakland Township in Michigan. Reese Balancefer back to serve for the Boilermakers. Picked up by Urquhart. Vander wide, can't get that to fall. Cross court set, ripped across, but kept alive. That was Chin. Allen Seifer once more, and the point to Isle, or actually that was off target, but touched. Calling a touch on Purdue, but that block goes up strong, and look at Hinkle. And right here, Clayton swipes off McSweeney's hands. And gets that touch call. Another look at that touch, and it's going to be challenged. As it should. I'm sure if, if McSweeney tells her coach, hey, I didn't touch that ball, Barnes is going to go up there and call the green line. It's green hard card. to see upon the replays that we're seeing, and this is a great look, too, a finger moving. It, if, if that, if, is that why you see Sloan? Uh, no, I think <laughs> I don't see one. Right. And that's the hard part, right, from a lot of these camera, even though we have great camera angles, it's still hard to reverse some of these calls. My final answer is no. <laughs> okay. Not you, see the hands, you do see the fingers straight up. Now do they go back? Not I really. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it either. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what the official says. Well, it's currently 11 to 10 Iowa. So this is a big one right here as Iowa tries to take a two-set lead on the road. Purdue hitting 111 in this set, second in the Big Ten and hitting percentage at 283. So those struggles from the second set have continued as this continues to be under review. Well, you see Iowa pulling together as a team and Purdue, you got Skimmerhorn on the other side, rallying the troops. So that will go to the Hawkeyes, and that's a big swing, making it now a three-point lead. Yeah, good challenge right now by Iowa. A nice trust by your teammates, too, right? You've got to turn to the bench. you really got to tell your coach the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you wish had happened. <laughs> that serve will go out of bounds. So give me the point right back. Sydney Dennis at the service line for the Hawkeyes. A two-point lead for Iowa. Hornung gets it over. On a banjo, skies and fires, but that's sent back. Urquhart will take it herself. And tipped over, point two, Iowa. Yeah, they're going to call it, obviously, uh, Balancing for his backcourt, so she can't do much with that ball. She's in the back row as at 6 2 setter. Anytime that ball is tight or overpassed, that's a really hard ball for Purdue to get back to a three point lead. Balancing for back sets it to Cook, and Iowa is rolling up to four points now. Yeah, it almost seems like that set died a little bit. Cook is taking a big broad jump there. So when you take that broad jump, your point of contact is low. So when that ball is set a little bit tighter to the pin, you don't have a lot of air to swing. And with the hammer is Hudson <laughs> to answer back. That's right, it was a hammer too. That's the ball that Eva Hudson likes. It's right in that window for her. She can do a lot with that. Up to nine kills. She had 19 the last time these two teams met 10 days ago. Tessier looks to Urquhart. That just drifts out of bounds. Yeah, hard to push for those first ball side outs right now for Iowa to gain that edge. Urquhart really needed that ball. To, a little bit more of a snap to hit that sideline. Skimmerhorn at the service line for the Boilermakers. Urquhart keeps it in. Yeah, a lot of patience, too. That's a nice move by Urquhart. 
identifying that high ball and keeping the ball in front of her to see the open court. Open court. Uh, Iowa leading 15 to 12. Urquhart continuing her impressive play for the Hawkeyes offensively. Making it happen for the Hawkeyes. Tomorrow, Maddie Kubik and third-ranked Nebraska hit the road to face Michigan State. Coverage begins tomorrow at 8 Eastern, powered by Unleaded 88, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. So you get a little dose of Thursday night Big Ten volleyball. Nebraska will also look to go 5-0 in Big Ten play. Purdue has that opportunity today, but they are facing a major challenge by the Hawkeyes. Hudson fires that over on a banjo. The back row blasts too long, but tipped. Yeah, do I see on a banjo, and she doesn't often get those swings out of the backcourt. In fact, it was a little awkward, I think, but there she goes. She still got it. Looks like she clipped Colvin's hands. Six kills today for Anna Banjo. And that's going to give a point to Purdue. Yeah, and uh, Maya Jones just was in the net, probably up a little too early. You get a little antsy, too, if you see that ball you want to go after. You have to have a lot of body control as a middle attacker, a middle blocker. So not only do you have to get your hands over the net at point of contact, you got to make sure on your way down you get those hands away from the net. Iowa took set number two. They lead by three here as it gets later on. Eva Torrance set the service line. Ortega looking for Urquhart and too long. Yeah, and this is what uh, Ortega does. She'll go against the grain. She's, it's kind of what she's been doing all night. The pass will move up in front of the setting position, and she'll put that ball back behind Urquhart. She had a lot of core to hit into. I wouldn't be surprised if she goes after it again. She looks for Black this time, and that's back-to-back -back points for Purdue with their net front presence. And here's Renner, too. She's saying, let's go. We got to do something here, and this is why she's that setter in the front court. She gets those hands over at point of contact and places them towards the center of the court, so it's a step block. Purdue within two. Jones puts it down hard. One thing I like about Jones is that the setter for Iowa, Ortega, will put that ball up, and Jones makes the decision which direction she's going to go to. See how Ortega put that ball up nice and high, and Jones decided, okay, I'm going to take a crossbody this time. Sometimes she takes a sharp angle. That's a nice middle attack. Renner goes cross court to Hudson. And the Hawkeyes keep this alive. Such great effort we've seen from Iowa today, but Colvin takes some heat off to perfection. Very smart play by Colvin, too. Pinkle does a nice dive over there, all the way outside the court. But here you go, Colvin, recognizing that, oh, yeah, the libero's not up there. I'll just tip it. Smart play. Made Hinkle work a lot on that point. Urquhart picked up by Skimmer perfectly. And this communication for the Hawkeyes leads to a point for the Boilermakers to tie this one up. Right, in the end it was just a little wide for Maya Jones, but to start that rally, we had Skimmer Horn down the line, acting like the great libero that she is. And now that Chen is in there, let's see if she can get some offensive numbers going. Up the middle, Jones terminates that play. I'm saying her name an awful lot, which is what Iowa has to do in order to win this match. And then you put her at the service line today where she has six aces today. On the back row, it is Hudson. Almost an overpass, but a point for the Boilermakers. Yeah, I really like how Skimmerhorn right now is controlling the backcourt. She's not afraid to step in front of Ava Torrance back there to get the ball. She's the captain of the back row. You see her kind of moving over to her right side. She's going to take that ball, which leads up to a great kill by Eva Hudson. Raven Colvin back to serve. Up the middle. 
is McSweeney getting into the action in set number three. Uh, Coach Barnes said, hey, we got to get McSweeney going. She is one of the fastest arms in the gym. She'll get up fast. She's got a lot of speed. And if the set is right there, she should be able to score every time. Here is calling Jones and McSweeney a lot. And Dave Shondell, their first match, said the middles ate us alive and not a whole lot different in match number two. Clayton, that won't fall. Back row for Urquhart and too long. So just when we're talking how great Urquhart was to get him that win in that second set, she's getting a lot of pressure here. She's getting the ball an awful lot in this third set to try to do something with it. Going down to the wire in set number three. Can Iowa go up two to one against the number five team in the country? It is Vanderwey who finds the space. She makes it look easy too, and it's amazing that that ball dropped too. I think she was surprised. She's got a pass wing, get up. She was on the ground. And then she just makes a play, a nice roll shot in the middle. She was in a full on squash. Yeah, she was. Popped up and got the kill. Picked up by Hudson, balance for up the middle and kept alive by the Hawkeyes. Back row for Urquhart. Balance for back set to Cook. She has been on fire today. And she's going down the line, which I love, too. It's a risky play. It's great to see straight up. You notice outside the body line of Urquhart. Yes, let's go, Purdue. <laughs> Eva Hudson getting her team involved. They've been trying to generate that energy, trying to find separation against this plucky Hawkeye team. Hard on the attempt. Fallon Seifer sets up Hudson. And it will drop in a point for Purdue. Will give them the 21 to 20 lead. That was close. <laughs> that I actually really did close. think upon first viewing, it was right and bounce. And here comes the challenge. I feel self-assured now. Well, well, I think they, you know, if you're Barnes, for sure, you want to get that challenge because here we go. You're after 20. Well, Delaney. Yeah, Eva Hudson goes up really strong. Look at Eagle. It's almost like that isn't slow motion, but boy, she's going backwards for that ball. You see the shadow. So I'm not quite sure if that actually hit the line. Let's see from this angle. I think it's out. If you're a coach, do you want to see your players just play it if it's close like it's that? It's close. And you notice all of them are kind of standing up there hoping. And I say that kindly. <laughs> you know, after a long rally, you know, you're you do hope if you're Purdue, you know, you hope that's out. If you're Iowa, you hope that you, you're hoping. But yes, if you're a coach, you would like to see probably, all right, somebody's got to take it if it's that close. And it is confirmed. So it's set number three. It remains 21 to 20. So a lost challenge for Jim Barnes. He's going for it, and you can tell they feel like this is their first opportunity to get their first win in Big Ten play. Cassier up the middle, and McSweeney is rejected. Clayton's there respecting McSweeney. This is something they wanted to do right from the start. Timeout called on the floor. Iowa within two, but Purdue trying to put this set away. A beautiful block up the middle by the former Hawkeye, Hannah Clayton, making a difference for the Boilermakers, trying to go up two to one. Just like set number one, another close one, and set number three in West Lafayette, Iowa is bringing it to number five Purdue with the Boilermakers with a late two-point lead in the third. Yeah, 3-0 scoring run right now by Purdue. Inching their, their way, especially offensively, doing a much better job than they were in the beginning of the set. 
hitting 129, but it has been a struggle yes. clearly in that second set. You can see how it dropped off from the first. Tessie up the middle on a banjo has that set back. They go to Urquhart. Back set to Cook and an overpass. Hudson sails that out of bounds. You can tell she's upset at herself because that makes it a one-point game. I tell you, Hinkle's keeping this Iowa Hawkeyes in. She's doing everything she can to keep this ball off the court. I'm really impressed with her. That time, though, she gets the service air at a very tough time. 23-21 now the score. But Hinkle does bring a lot of experience. Played a couple years at UCLA from Rosemont, Minnesota. Wanted to come closer to home and found the fit here with the Hawkeyes. A lot of banjos just going to get that over the net. Valenceever clears it out for Hudson. She gets the point with the blast. Right, with the free ball opportunity with Purdue, they get that 24th point. Eva Hudson just way too easy to get that kill. It is set point for the Boilermakers, so Iowa is going to call a timeout. Another look at that important kill by Hudson. Yeah, those high hands right now by Toyosi and Amaya. It's a big block. They're a smart block. Well, Hudson carries such a load offensively for Purdue, and it's been tough today. Well, it has for her. I think, uh, you know, Iowa had her number. Eva gets going. She gets going. She's finding areas in the court. But, boy, you know, being six rotations tough, she's getting picked on, not only when she's in the backcourt, but in the frontcourt as well. So, you know, welcome again to the Big Ten, Eva. It's, you know, you feel for her, but you also know, hey, she's got a great career ahead of her. And it is a team sport. It's not just about one person. So she's going to rely on her teammates to bring her up. And it's all about, as a freshman, being a sponge, learning as much as possible. But it's interesting when you look at that highlight package, it reminds me of Northwestern taking Temi thomas Ilara out for a couple rotations because teams were picking on her, too. <laughs> That's right. Wanting her to maintain that confidence and that burst when they really do need her in the best spots. It really is a compliment, though, right? When you get picked on, it's a compliment. That is true. Yeah. And to have that as a freshman. Yeah. I mean, when I played, it, it, obviously to this day, it's been 30 years. Um, but, you know, I remember the scouting reports, and I only remember the people that really stood out. And there were only a few on each team, and that is a compliment. That's it, looking like she's headed for that kind of career for sure. Skimmerhorn at the service line. Tessie looking for Urquhart. That is sent back a big block for Purdue and they sweated it out but take a two to one lead in set number three 25 to 21. Yeah huge ending for a cook I mean not only offensively she's got eight kills and two errors with 15 attempts hitting 400 but she's got six blocks and that made a huge difference. Purdue on top you're in for this one folks. For our State Farm State of Success. No surprise at this, with the Big Ten being the best conference in the nation for volleyball. Look at these top five capacity percentages for these teams and the kind of numbers they are bringing through the doors, including Purdue, which has sold out all of its matches, even ones yet to come. Pete is fired up to be there today. Yeah, and they sold out in hours, too, for the student section. That's so, right, the block party. Yeah, that is a popular spot to be on campus. And they, I hear they, they travel pretty well. As they were at uh, full force at Illinois to cheer on the Boilermakers. So who doesn't want fans like that? I am. I have questions about those, I, what do you call them, a skull cap? that a couple of those gentlemen were weighing, but yeah. it is the, the Dave Shondell look. That must be it, and I think that's part of the reason you have a 7-0 team here at Holloway Gymnasium. And starting things off is Cook and the Boilermakers. Yeah, ending things in the third set, starting it off in the fourth. Got Madeline Cook coming through big time right now for Purdue. Iowa right there to the end in set number three, but they hit just 0-29 in that set, and Urquhart 
with the powerful blast. Yeah, just taking care of business. Purdue is trying to do a serving strategy where they're forcing Urquhart to go back for that pass because she's a six rotation player. So she's passing and swinging. And boy, it didn't phase her at all. She passed back there on that end line, just took her swing approach and went after it. That swing by Cook, the first time today Purdue struck first in any set in Iowa fights back to take a one-point lead. Yeah, nice dig transition game. Amaya Jones recognizing she gets up for the block, she gets off the net and gets herself available. That's what good middles do. Look at her get up, no middle in front of her, taking the easy shot, which is just that cross-court angle. Eva Hudson has that sent right back. Iowa strong at the net. Been fun to watch Toyosi on a banjo too, eyeballing this. Their block has really improved in the last two sets. Hip to hip, nose on the ball, hands over the net, putting on a nice blocking show. See the cohesion at the net for the Hawkeyes, unafraid against one of the best players in the Big Ten. That's going to go Purdue's way. Jim Barnes might not want to take this challenge call. He's only got one left. Three to two Iowa, but maybe he's talking that over. <laughs> he's discussing it. They like to kind of hang out up there and see, see what's going on before they pull out that challenge card. Ava Torrance into the service line. It goes off the tape. Hudson sends it in. How did Iowa keep that alive? And how do they get the point off of the serve? Just got to be ready, right? Your wrists have to be on the ground. Great heads up play. Nice serve, too, by Torrance. You got Sydney over there popping the ball up, but Hinkle doing her magic as a libero. That was magic right there. And you see the smiles from players like Jones. They still feel like they're in control and playing smooth. Jones keeps it going for a three-point lead. Yeah, scrappy. I was being very scrappy, very gritty right now. Purdue is slow down. This pace that they're at is not good. Not a good look for Purdue. Can you get a double-double kills and aces? Can you recall that <laughs> happening? I wouldn't be not surprised. Often. Cross court, off speed for Hudson on the goal shot. Up the middle, Colvin has that turned back, and Iowa continues to be dominant at the net. Up four. Yeah, good point. point, Sloan. Very dominant at the net. And, and hey, this is a Big Ten. Your physical presence is, this is where it's at. This is what sets the Big Ten apart. Being strong, being athletic, as gifted as you are, and taking advantage of that skill set at the net. On a banjo. Goes to Skimmerhorn. Hudson fires it down the line. That's a pretty swing. It really is. She just strokes that so nice, not afraid to go for that line shot. Even on a night where maybe those numbers aren't that great for her, she's still going after it. Iowa with the three-point lead. And with the freshman Hudson at the service line. Overpass and then sent down by Colvin, who read it perfectly. She did, and it's a great serve, too. The serve created that opportunity for that pass point. Hudson back at it. Up the middle, it is Jones. Hudson back row blast. Picked up by Ortega. And that was turned back. Purdue returning the favor. Yeah, they did. Out of system play for Iowa. Mandy Chen is right there. Again, another senior doing her job. Great dynamic move by both of them. In the end, is Chen with her left hand really reaching over the net into the center of the court. That comes out of play to Iowa. That was black. Who picks up the point? Yeah, that was ouch off the head of Raven Colvin. Look at those hands over the net on the play before with Maddie Chin. Tough to get that ball on the other side of the net when Maddie Chin is up there. How you want to see it be executed? Urquhart on the serve. Just getting it over is Hudson up the middle. Jones with authority. She has been owning.
the middle. And she's got her arm up. And that's why she's successful. Middles who have their arms low and down below their knees, it's not gonna work. Get those arms up, show your elbow, get that armpit up in that setter. So you're able to swing. Fun to watch her. Urquhart, great serve. And then the dig. Black once more, it goes out of bounds. Nine to five, I Right, so here's the flow, of, the flow of the game, Sloan, and this is what makes volleyball so special. It is a game of errors, but right now it's the flow. You see something like Iowa where they're staying consistent right now. Their dig transition game, they've got a certain pace. Except right now, when that happens. <laughs> I was feeling your energy, Liz. We're yeah. in such a good stretch right now. You see there, one road win at Purdue the last 19 matches. That coming in 2012. So a lot on the line for Iowa, trying to avoid no and five start and overpass there. Hinkle trying to settle things down for Vanderwide off the tape. Chin fires hard, but Iowa takes it 10 to 6. Yeah, and it's not like Purdue's not working. They're working really hard for this. It's just that's the way the game goes. Iowa's got some little bit more momentum. Purdue's got to find a way to stop it. And right now it's with this first ball side out opportunity. Maya Jones, another great serve. Chin tries to drop it in. And she does find the perfect spot. She found the edge, didn't she? And that was gutsy. Going hard, going in. Right behind Ortega. Ortega hoping that ball's out. Purdue needed that point. Three point lead for the Hawkeyes. Who took set number two, 25 17. Vanderweide slices that cross court. Yeah, Vanderweide is doing a nice job. Her numbers are really good tonight. She's gotten about 22 attempts, but she has 10 kills, one air hitting above 400. It's impressive. It is impressive for somebody like Vander White, who coach told us, you know, she's not an L1. She's more like an L2. She plays like an L2. Uh, but she's doing right now, she's doing a great job for the Hawkeyes. Just a sophomore, too. Fallon Seifer, and that is sent back on the attempt by Cook. The blocking is something that's really improved over the course of time. And that's what happens in volleyball, too. Blockers get used to hitters. Hitters get used to blockers. And it's those small adjustments they both need to make in order to find a way to score. Banjo's been having a great day. That time it goes to Purdue. They're within four. Cook also highly productive today. That was her 10th kill. She's got three airs. There's Allie Hornung at the service line. And she picks up the A's, a really difficult one going right to Vanderwaal. Yeah, and Hornung has done a nice job for Purdue. I think, you know, when she first came into the program, her sister was in the program. And if you notice, she switched jersey numbers to kind of honor her sister in a way. But she's really come into her own this year, expanding her role. Sweeney up the middle. Vanderwide. Good effort, but the point to Iowa and Vanderwide and her decision making continue to lead the way. Yeah, doing a nice job with that deep kill. She's finding a way, and look at how fast Gimmerhorn is. She's not giving up. She eyeballs where she needs to go, but boy, yeah, she ran out of real estate there. You see how her entire quad is wrapped up. She missed three matches due to injury, making her return today for the number five team in the country is Hudson. Blast that. Urquhart. Off the block touch. There was Cook again. Kept alive, though, by the Hawkeyes. But Urquhart with the air will get the point to Purdue. Yeah, good effort, being very gritty and scrappy. And that's what Iowa needs to continue to do to find their way against this very strong Purdue team. Skimmer Horn's going to get them going in as a libero, strong server. Let's see if they can get a run here. Skimmer Horn keeps it in. Big ace for the Boilermakers. 
nice flat hand, and boy, that, that ball just floated out to the right side. A timeout on the floor. We're back in 60, Iowa, with the lead. Volleyball on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Tremendous atmosphere at Holloway Gymnasium, where Purdue is 7-0 this season. I can't believe I didn't immediately think those gentlemen were trying to be like Dave Shondell. And I respect it. Avanjo on the attempt as that turned back. Tessier off the quick hitter to McSweeney drops it in. Yeah, good find by Tessier. Turn around quick as the setter keep those hands high and finds her friend. McSweeney with no block. Colvin is not lining up in that gap situation for McSweeney. Just needs to take that right step over to put a hand on it. Mari Hinkle, a really solid serve. Tessier up the middle to Jones. And Iowa will settle it down. Allen Seaver up the middle to Colvin, not there. Cook puts it away. What a match for Cook. It is. It's a great temple ball, too. And I love how Colvin is being resilient. It, the connection is not great right now between Colvin and Balance Seifer, but she's finding a way to keep the ball alive and still being involved. And in the end, got the opportunity for her friend Cook over there on the right side to get that kill. Brenner looking across court to Hudson, who freezes Iowa. Yeah, Hudson gets a little love on that tempo ball, it's not super. As high as she can to add that snap. On a banjo, talk about snap, had it right there. Yeah, right now trading points. Offensively, Iowa was really strong this whole set. 15 points hitting above 300. Purdue's making their way. They were down. Now they're up to 130. Iowa at 364. Banjo at the service line. Hudson takes some heat off. She gets another try. That time dials it up for the point. Yeah, Hudson, a couple kills in the last couple points. They're going to find her. Nice assist by Skimmer Warren, giving her the height that she needs to make a decision of what she's going to do on that ball. You've seen so much of what she's capable of in her attempts today. Dave Shondell feeling like she has every shot in the book, even as a freshman. Her cart picks it up and gets it back from Ortega successfully. Yeah, and what do you notice about that? So, Urquhart can do that on the left side and the right side in that rotation. That's row one. So Urquhart is still involved. She's passing and she's swinging. So they're, Purdue's trying to go after her with the serve, takes her out, does out of system. The setter still gives her the ball and gets a kill. Really I know that's a long explanation, but very impressive. She's withstanding a lot as Colvin tries to place it in. Vander White fires. Not a bounce. Seen her miss in a while. She's going for that sharp angle, which she should be. She finds a way around the block, just misses the end line, the sideline. Oven now at the service line for the Boiler Makers, who trail by one and now have tied it up. Now, Colvin does a nice job on that serving line. Good for her to go back there, be as aggressive as she can, going hard for that tape. Iowa leading the way, 10 to 6 in service aces. Vander Wide kept in. She found the last inch of the court to drop that. That's a nice connection. Ortega to Vander Wide. Finding a lot of success. One thing we haven't talked about is how the 6-2 can affect that. Different yeah. setters, different tempos. Off the slide. Clayton is denied. Trying to go for that slide attack. Purdue's gone away from that right side a little bit. Clayton wasn't able to score, but good heads up by Vanderweide to turn those hands in. 
nice block. Vanderweide, by the way, entered today averaging 1.38 kills per set on 143 hitting percentage today. 12 kills on 25 attempts, just two airs, hitting 400. So how is she doing it, right? So here's the question, right? So not only is the pass a dig transition game, but this is kind of what Iowa wanted. They wanted Purdue to respect the middle so much that they're going to be late to the pins. And so really opened up that space for the outside hitters to score. Vander White's taking advantage of that. So Purdue might be thinking really hard about those middles. Boy, we got burned last time against those middles. They're hesitating a little too much, and therefore late on the pins. Iowa leading 18 to 16 here in the fourth set, and Iowa's blocks have been outstanding. Well, Iowa does a nice job identifying, keeping those eyes on the ball. And you notice, I always watch their ponytails. If their ponytails are down, that means their head is up. You want their head down, eyes on the ball, hands in. So Iowa's doing a nice job of keeping those ponytails up if they have them, and their eyes locked in. Much better hitting. Look at the third set and the fourth set for Iowa and how they've completely flipped the script to be hitting 360 at this point right now. And they are certainly within reach of this very close set to tying up this match. Purdue with a two to one advantage as they have flip flopped taking each set. And now they've got Amaya Jones at the service line. He's got six aces today. Here is Chin, too long. Yeah, unfortunate right now for Purdue. That's the pass they needed. They got her up to the net. They got the setter up to the net in a three-point play. Chin maybe didn't like it. It was too low, going hard. I'd like to see her take a big swing on that ball. Jones off the service line once more. Ortega up the middle, McSweeney. Shin takes another shot at it, picked up by Jones. Getting it over, Vander wide. Up the middle, it's Clayton. Vander wide once more and stays in. Vander wide taking advantage of Ortega in front right now. Timeout called by Purdue as Vanderweide continues to paint the court with her shots. A close one here at West Lafayette. Coming up, the doubleheader continues as Sarah Franklin leads number seven Wisconsin against Indiana. That's coming up next, powered by Unleaded 88 on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Jones continues at the service line to great success. Shin tries to put that away. Ortega back set, not there for Black. Ortega feeds Black again. Difficult play by Hudson and a point to the Hawkeyes. Nice job by Black. She's really coming through. Going against the grain. Going after that left side weaker block for Purdue. Like that right side pin, and that's what's got him to this point. 21 points right now for Iowa with Amaya Jones. Couldn't ask for anything else right now for Iowa. Jones back to work. And gets another ace. That will tie her career high seventh in this match. And also had balance for over there for Purdue in the front court. Aggressive stuff by Jones that goes off the tape, off the slide. Iowa's defense there, over by Urquhart. Up the middle, back row blast by Hudson to perfection. That was a lot of speed, too, by Eva Hudson out of the backcourt. Valen Seifer being a front row setter right now, only had two options in the front row. That's why Eva Hudson made it more important for her to get the ball. Now they have three hitters with Balancifer in the backcourt. Off the side out, it's Balancifer back to serve. Ortega looking for Black. That's been working well this set. We got Ellis being subbed in on the left side. Audrey Black is all smiles. 
doing a nice job, but I really like the tempo that Ortega's given her right side pins. Of course, you want to you want to give kudos to the pass. I caught a glimpse of Ana Banjo coming in. The biggest smile, so happy for her teammate as she checked into the game. You just feel that energy with the Hawkeyes, but Purdue with trying to climb back into this set. Yeah, and Ellis was able to get that touch that time with that flat hand going for those high hands. 23-18, Iowa very close to closing this out at service line is Kelly Horno for Purdue. What a beautiful serve. That just floated in the air, kind of stood in there for a little bit. Didn't have a lot of motion, it's kind of dead air. Just when you think it's coming to you or going out of bounds, it floats in. 23-19 now. Tessier to McSweeney. Here is Cook with the big kill to make it a three-point contest. Yeah, they needed to get to 20 here and force Iowa to get this time out so they can, Iowa, take a breather, but Purdue needs this momentum to keep it going. 23 to 20 as Iowa calls a timeout. Do you talk to your team at this point about staying ready in this moment? Are you talking strategy when you are so close to set point? Well, I like watching the coaches, and we're doing a great job of showing both coaches. <laughs> um, I think they're taking a break. They're taking a breather. You've got Jim Barnes, who's just kind of like, all right, we got two points to go. What do we need to do? Let's let's keep it clean volleyball. First first contact is really important. Let's do what we do best in order to, and how we got here is by utilizing that first pass. Let's get that right side, that left side pick going. And then you've got Purdue, where I'm sure they're rallying right now under the likes of their leaders. Their seniors right now really need to talk it up to the teammates to figure out a way to get this next point. They're not looking to get to 25. They're looking towards the next point. So you can't look that far ahead when you're behind. They have been behind for much of this set. Maya Jones continues to be a force for the Hawkeyes. 11 kills, seven aces, tying a career high. Well, she's just up fast, and she's ready to go. She wants to get set, and she's very confident up there. She does all the right things when she's in the front row, and her center trusts her. She's not late, she's on time, and she delivers. And you should definitely check out the Facebook page B1G Volleyball to see a great at the net feature on Amaya Jones with her volunteer work with uh, Grow Johnson County, a nonprofit that is giving fresh produce to the community. Absolutely check it out. It's a fantastic, lovely story about a really great social work major for the Hawkeyes. Here's Vander Wide on the attack. Hudson drops that in off her big swing. Wow, there's Eva Hudson. All the space in the world for her. Nice assist by Hornig. Identifying that ball over her shoulder. Not easy to do at all. And gets the kill. Purdue creeping back point by point. Vander wide from the back row. And Cook drops that hammer for that kill. It is a one point game on a five nothing run. Nice job by the setters. Identifying who's hot, making plays left side, right side pin, one on one opportunity. Cook is the go to for Purdue. Purdue fired up. Burkhart takes that serve on a banjo, takes some heat off, and what a big point. It was, and wow, did you see her sky? She was off there, super high. She's early. And she gets a block on the way down. That's a nice tip. Very tough to defend against if you're Purdue. A lot of composure there by Ana Banjo in a big moment. It's Dennis, the defensive specialist at the service line. Fallon Seifer. And then to Cook. Here is Urquhart. At the net. 
Messier looking to Urquhart once more. And set point goes to Iowa. We are tied in West Lafayette, 25-22. How about that fight by the Hawkeyes? It is tied two sets apiece. And Urquhart finishes it. That slow arm, deep line shot. She knew exactly what she was doing. It was a great rally in the end, but boy, Iowa really comes together. We got a fight, five sets. We are going to five in West Lafayette after Iowa takes set number four. This is a Hawkeye team that has never beaten a top, top, top 10 team on the road in program history. The last time they beat Purdue on the road was in 2012. A lot on the line for the Hawkeyes, who are 0-4 in Big Ten play. And if you are awaiting Indiana, Wisconsin, that is already underway. You can catch that on the Fox Sports app. You see Wisconsin tied right now with the Hoosiers, the number seven team in the country. Indiana will try and pull an upset just like Iowa is attempting to do against number five, Purdue. Well, here we go. <laughs> this is what we're used to, right, Sloan? This is what it's all about. It happened just last week with Northwestern getting its first top 10 road win in program history. Who says it can't happen again? And they start out for the fourth time tonight, striking first. Yeah, the pass goes in front of the setter, not afraid to run it right behind her back, finding McSweeney for that first kill. Alan Seifer setting up Cook, and she has been the go-to hot hand for the Boilermakers for much of this match. Nice clean contacts to start off this set by both programs going to their go-to. Middles for Iowa, Cook on the right side attack for Purdue. Tessier up the middle for Jones. It was Hudson. Now to Urquhart tries to place it. They go to Cook once more, and she unleashes the blast. I like that out-of-system play going to Cook, and that's what I wanted to see earlier, is that she's on fire. Why not give her the ball all the way across the court? But what got him involved in that was balancing for his defense. She had two nice digs to keep him in that rally. Good recovery by Hinkle. Not there for Anna Banjo. Colvin gets it over. And Urquhart is going to pick up the point. That felt like a desperate moment, but goes Iowa's way. And Purdue likes to play short. You'll notice Purdue plays up around the 10-foot line. Iowa will keep pushing them back and finding ways to score around the sideline. Urquhart is very good at that. Tied up at two, Iowa looking for its first Big Ten victory this season and hoping it comes against the number five team in the country. But Eva Hudson says, I'll take this one. Jim Barnes in between sets knows what's at stake. He's definitely in there. Yes, I love Maya Jones. Just not yes, I got this. We got this, coach. Even at media day, you could tell the connection that was building amongst Jim Barnes and his players. You can feel like the buy-in had already been established and seeing that kind of moment and maybe the biggest moment Iowa volleyball has had in some time means a whole lot. Ankle keeps that in play. Urquhart over the net. Here is Hudson unloading. Two kills right off the bat in this quick set. Hudson's just warming up. She needed a few sets to get her going. She's above 200 now, getting tons of attempts. 49 attempts for this young player. She's in it to win it. In a decisive fourth set the last time against Iowa, she had eight kills in that fourth set as Purdue will roll to a three-point lead. Yeah, Renner's in there for that reason. She can attack, she's offensive. She is that 5-1 setter that Purdue is taking advantage of right now with her in the front row. 
and a timeout on the floor by Iowa. Multiple contributions by the Boilermakers, giving them the lead here in the fifth set. The dump in by Renner. Perfect. Second game of our doubleheader already underway, and Indiana with the early set number one lead against number seven, Wisconsin. You can catch that on the Fox Sports app until the conclusion of this fantastic match in West Lafayette. We're in the fifth set. Iowa looking for its first Big Ten win, and Jones, the go-to player for the Hawks. Right, and Hudson took the bait, right, against the slide attack. You don't want to float out with that hitter. You want to stay your ground, hold it, and press towards the middle of the court. Amaya Jones knew exactly what she was doing to get that kill. That brings the Hawkeyes within two, and into the net, a tough point to give up. That was a tough point, especially in the bottom of the tape. I'm sure she would like to have that back. Purdue taking advantage. Big point right now for Purdue on the serving line. That comes from one of the best servers in Urquhart. Here is Hudson at the service line. Looking for Black. Makes it difficult on the dig. Urquhart, great hustle for the Hawkeyes that will keep this rally going. Brenner back set to Colvin and more defense by Urquhart. The tap by Emma Ellis not there. The tap the other way will keep this up. Ellis will fire it and point to Iowa. They persevere through that point to get within two. Yeah, and Iowa's holding on. Even though the connections were a little bit better with Colvin, on the other side of the net, Hinkle and Urquhart in the backcourt, keeping the Iowa Hawk Hawkeyes alive just in time for Emma to hit this ball out of, out of bounds, but we might have a challenge here. It looks like Dave Shondell is going to be challenging this play. Did it touch any Hawkeyes? Doesn't look like on Doesn't the block. Look like Doesn't it. look like Urquhart. No, not at all. In fact, on the way down, the ball was sailing out. I, when the block was coming on the way down, we saw a good angle there. The ball sailing out of bounds, so. Now check in that back row to see if it may be grazed off of Urquhart. Definitely did not look like there was any touch at the net. And you'll see Urquhart in the middle attempting to receive. Hard to tell on that angle, but I haven't seen anything that would overturn this. No, I, I didn't see anything. Of course, she's taking a swing and a miss. She doesn't quite pull the hands back, but it looked like it might have sailed over her forearm. Yeah, and it really has to be conclusive. It, it, ha it has to be noticeable for them to overturn it. Purdue with the two-point advantage in the fifth set. Iowa looking for its first road win at Purdue since 2012. And it will stand. Big point for Iowa there. them well within striking distance of the Boilermakers, the number five team in the country. The team they're looking to upset for Big Ten win number one this season. Here is Ellis, the roll shot places it perfectly. Yes, she took something off of it. She knew what was open in the court. Her high swinging flat hands, we haven't been working that often for somebody like Emma Ellis. Well, let's just keep the ball in play and see what happens. Point lead for the Boilermakers who have faced a fight from the Hawkeyes. Ortega goes cross court to Vanderweide, who's had the hot hand late in this match. And a fantastic kill for the Boilermakers. And they've been going away from Hannah Clayton. They haven't used her as much, but off of this dig transition by Torrance, it was a perfect pass. Why not? She goes cross body, finds an open court. Hawkeyes in the scene. 
just whips it down for a strong four-point lead right now here in the fifth set. We'll switch. Which I can't stand, by the way. Really? Switching I did sides. not know your strong feelings about I this. I do have strong feelings. I, I loved when COVID uh, forced everyone to stay on their side of the net. I'll just put it out there. Over. Dumping it right down is black. Or excuse me, is it runner? It's runner. Here we go, the center coming up big. But it's Colvin with the serve. Fantastic, great scoring run right now. Timeout on the floor. Renner saw the perfect opportunity. The ball right in front of her. No arms in sight. Yeah, 3-0 scoring run right now. And, and this is what Purdue can do, Purdue does so well. I mean, off the serving line, put the pressure, being aggressive. Nice fast point opportunity. And this is a Purdue team looking to close things out against the Iowa Hawkeyes 0-4 in the Big Ten. And even though they lost six starters, including All-American level players, this is a team that went to the Elite Eight last year. A lot of high expectations for Purdue. You're also getting another look at the match coming up after ours is complete. Number seven, Wisconsin at Indiana. A very close first set, and we'll get that to you as soon as we can. You can also check that out on the Fox Sports app. But tied at 15. It's a little too early to say if we'll have a repeat here, but Iowa within striking distance still. Of course, and you know, they, they've been in this situation. They're gritty, they're scrappy. They All they have to do is start to play a little cleaner and be ready, because right now Purdue has got the momentum going. Somebody like her, Vanderweide, let's see what she's got in the tank in this fifth set. Look at the sets that Iowa has been able to take us against some really great opponents. A couple top 11 teams, including three in total against this Purdue squad, now number five in the country as Colvin goes back to work. She goes to her cart and it works exactly as intended. Yes, and something she did the last time around, go after her cart. Six rotation player, take her out of the offense, force her to go back. Put some pressure on her. Colvin has made a huge difference with her serving here in this fifth set up the middle. Mick Sweeney has that turn back. Back row blast from Urquhart. Up the middle again. Clayton and Iowa finally needed that point. They sure did. They had to stop the bleeding somehow with Colvin on that back line. Just getting that side out was really important for Iowa. Clayton's up there, no space to hit into. She's away from the setter, but they had such a strong block. Not a lot of area to go for. Tessier with the serve for the Hawkeyes. Up the middle of his Hudson and rejected. Vanderweide, McSweeney. Hudson's in the back court. Vanderweide right in front of her. Just presses down, identifies what's happening, anticipating, and jumps right in. Vanderweide has such, had such a huge impact on this match as Ellis hammers that in. Yeah, coming up big, too. That was a nice ball set all the way to the pin, and she put some pace on it. If you notice, her approach came in a lot faster than what she's been doing this last couple sets. A little bit more confidence, a little bit more pep in her step on that one. I think that was her best kill tonight. On a banjo, tries to get that through. That time tipping it. I will go to the Boilermakers. Yeah, right now, Urquhart got that ball up, but on a banjo, did not get off the net. You have to work really hard as an outside hitter to transition every play. What happens in games and moments like this, you stop and you watch. Don't watch. You have to react, anticipate, and move. Fallon Seifert goes to Urquhart up the middle. It is turned back on the attempt by McSweeney and Purdue in control. Hear this excitement out of the Purdue Boilermakers. Clayton did not have to move at all for that block, just putting her hands up and over. 
That'll take a big run by Iowa as they go right back to Urquhart on the serve receive. Kept alive, no, Ellis not going to be able to get there on that third touch. So a point to Iowa as they keep this going. 13 to 7, the Purdue lead. Facing a very tough battle from Iowa. Jim Barnes talked about how he wanted to keep everyone upbeat and positive. They have been working hard even though the wins haven't come, but they are right here in West Lafayette. Yeah, they're not going away, right? They're fighters. They are fighters. You got Urquhart one-on-one. -on -one. Look at that block. Really stepping in, identifying what she needs to do visually. It's one of the hardest skills, hardest skills in volleyball is to block, let alone solo block. Sydney Dennis at the service line, trailing by five. Hudson up the middle, and that is rejected. How about all those blocks right now for Iowa? Timeout called on the floor. And Urquhart involved again. Well, we got 14 blocks right now for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Identifying, communicating, making big moves by Urquhart. You have Hudson there with a lot of speed and momentum coming into that big swing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's probably not her best set. I mean, she's hitting very low to the tape on her back row attacks. Put her in the front court. She's hitting very high over the tape. So difference, big difference over there. But, you know, they're going to find their go-to, and that's Eva Hudson. 52 attempts right now. She's climbed her way back with 19 kills. We weren't saying that at the beginning of the match. So she's really done a nice job of kind of making her way and finding her her numbers but in the end you know Purdue needs to stop watching her attack and getting involved and being scrappy on the coverage balls. Eva Hudson by the way a double double 19 kills 10 digs her second this season and as soon as this is concluded we will go over to number seven Wisconsin a 2.1 set lead. Or I should say in the first set over Indiana. You can catch up on that on Fox Sports app or just why would you want to turn from this match here as Iowa continues to fight against the number five team in the country, Sydney Dennis. Goes back to work as the serve. And that's out of reach. Emma Ellis coming up big a couple times in the fifth set. And we have match point for the That's something that she's done. Emma Ellis is that person. She comes off the bench and she adds that little fire. What most needed. Ornung on the serve. Iowa trying to stay alive on a banjo. Has that block tipped. Tessier to Urquhart sends it out of bounds into space.